Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 15th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. First of all, sorry for a little hiccup with yesterday's podcast. I re-recorded it uh, to add uh, the solar wind story, but apparently the earlier version actually was made live initially. So some of the early downloaders may have gotten the version without the solar wind story. And so let's start with a quick update on solar winds. What do we know so far and uh, what actually happened there? Well, appears that solar winds the company that makes this network monitoring system did get compromised and as a result the attacker was able to inject malicious code into a critical library that is being shipped with solar winds orion and with FireEye being one of the victims and apparently the company that also tipped off SolarWinds off this compromise, we do have a great blog post by FireEye with plenty of indicators of compromise that you can check. The compromise apparently did last from March to July of this year and affected our versions 2019.4 through 2020.2.1 hotfix 1. If you are using one of the affected versions, then you will likely do have the malicious DLL installed. The big question, of course, is whether or not the attacker did take advantage of the malicious DLL. And so far, it looks like only very specific organizations were actually then compromised using the backdoor that this DLL implemented. Endpoint protection providers are adding signatures for the respective malicious files. So you may see some alerts pop up from those systems. However, they just focus on the actual compromised solar winds install. They don't necessarily detect any kind of additional malware that was installed just in your specific organization. So you have to be really careful how you deal with uh, this particular incident. Affected solar winds installs should be considered as compromised, should probably uh, be removed from the network until you have a chance to closely investigate uh, the particular system. On Monday evening, we did have a great webcast by Jake Williams that summarizes a lot of what we know about this incident and the lists also some of the indicators of compromise, like for example, some of the domain names used by the malware to establish command and control channels. Your quickest test at this point is probably to check your DNS logs for any indication that something in your network connected to one of uh, these uh, domain names. But this may be going back all the way till March when the first sort of compromised version was apparently released. So uh, not everybody has logs uh, that far back, but that's probably the quickest uh, test that you can run at this point. And always keep in mind that uh, whoever did it is a very sophisticated adversary. They have a habit of setting up specific command control infrastructure for individual victims. So very possible that whatever version of the follow on malware you got uh, did use different domain names and is not necessarily just identified by the domain names that have been published in various reports. And Apple today released its usual update for everything, iOS, macOS, tvOS, watchOS, separate updates for Safari, and then also older versions of iOS and watchOS, going back all the way to the very first Apple Watch. Browsing through the vulnerabilities that are being addressed here, there's really nothing that sort of sticks out, but a number of vulnerabilities that would allow 
arbitrary code execution by, for example, visiting a malicious website. Now, uh, these vulnerabilities are sadly quite common, so not really all that terribly exciting, but certainly we have uh, seen occasional exploitation of these vulnerabilities. As far as macOS is concerned, this update applies to macOS 11, Big Sur, as well as Catalina and Mojave. For the later two, for basically the last macOS uh, 10 versions, we didn't really get a security update when macOS 11 was released. So you will notice that a number of vulnerabilities that are being patched for Catalina and Mojave are already patched for the older version of macOS 11. So no particular rush to update these, but uh, something you probably should take care of over the next uh, week or so. And given that there are security updates for older versions of macOS, you don't necessarily have to upgrade to macOS 11, which has caused uh, problems for some users. And Sophos and Reversing Labs uh, took the, I think so far, unique step uh, to release a repository of 20 million malware samples for machine learning. These are samples that they use in their models. They do release a bunch of Python code uh, with this in order to essentially help you uh, to get started applying machine learning to malware analysis. The goal here is to create essentially a standard data set as it is present in sort of other fields that can then be used by researchers to train and evaluate machine learning algorithms that deal with malware. We'll have to see how well this works out. Of course, one of the problems tends to be uh, with um, malware that it changes all the time, that uh, new things are being added, old things no longer really all that important. So we'll have to see if uh, this particular data set, which is a total of eight terabytes of data, uh, has the longevity that sort of these standard data sets need. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.